Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Hey, today we're getting back on the HS1 Yamaha 90 Twin. And I'm, I'm going to kind of go over some of the, the old parts and show you what we've had to get new. How to get a lot of stuff for this thing. It, uh, if you remember right, it had some crack cases. Uh, the, it, it was almost as hard to get pistons and rings for this as it was for the F7 Kawasaki. Not quite, but almost. It's, uh, I, I, they probably just didn't make very many, and, and that's probably the case with the Kawasaki also. Uh, they just weren't made in the amount that uh, the Yamahas and the Suzuki's, Hondas of course. And these 90 Twins were only made two years 70-71 so uh, it was it was kind of difficult finding stuff but I think I've got everything now so we're going to try to get started on it today and start with assembly uh, one other thing I'll show you as I uh, as I cover the cases is that I thought I had uh, I just didn't notice the damage there was to a clutch or to the clutch so I'm going to show you that too, but I was able to, I didn't even notice it until yesterday when I got ready to start cleaning up parts. And uh, I did find one on uh, eBay. Matter of fact, it, a man in Wyoming has it, and that's where I'd got the cases before and a couple of the other parts that I needed. So he, I probably should have just bought everything he had, and I'd have been good to go. But anyhow, let me get you... Uh, overhead here and we'll take a look at what what we're doing and what I've got okay guys I don't know whether you remember it or not but I think you can see right in here somebody had put a screw in here and we had a crack here and here in the Kickstarter uh, the boss where the Kickstarter goes through and there was quite a bit of damage in here. You can see where the Kickstarter come apart here. And I think they they put the screw in there to keep the the spring down in the pocket. So this was this side over here was probably uh, something we could have worked with, but the inside where the cracks were, uh, it was going to be real difficult to get in there to weld those. Uh, I imagine a real welder could do it, but uh, being the rookie I am, I just really didn't want to do it, so I went looking for uh, another set of cases. And you can see here all the, the muckety-muck that was in there for the crankshaft that we did rebuild. This side of the cases I think probably would, were okay. I don't even see any damage from, uh, from the chain. So the left side is good, the right side's not. Uh, usually it's the other way around, so I, I'll probably be able to pedal these some, somewhere down the road, or at least the one side. Okay, enough of that. Now I mentioned the clutch, and I sure didn't see it. But you see here where it's broke out of the back, on the, where, the, where the boss is here? I don't know whether this is the uh, the gear that came out of there or not. So you can see that I've got a feeling they probably found another gear. This one here looks okay. I would think that it would probably be busted too. And uh, anyhow, I I got uh, this the whole clutch assembly from the same man that I got the cases from. Uh, just south of me in Wyoming. So I think this is maybe a little worse on the one I'm getting. So I may be going in here. I see this moves a little bit here, maybe a little more than normal. So I may go ahead and see if the AT1 pucks will work in here. And if they will, then we'll go ahead and swap out this piece uh, off of the other clutch, the hub, and uh, put this piece on it. 
and that way it'll be a little better. This one here we can trim up a little and it should be okay. But I just, I sure didn't see that. I don't know why in the world. I guess it was, uh, if it was, uh, you couldn't see the trees for the forest maybe. I don't know how the saying goes. But I think we've got all the stuff we need. Okay, so I've got the new one here and I've got all the new bearings and uh, seals already in. It's a lot nicer, at least it's clean. And here's where the damage was on the other one. And everything appears to be okay here. So we've got our new bearings and our new seal in here. And that's really about the only ones we need to deal with. So hopefully we're ready to start assembly with this thing. And of course the crankshaft. I just pulled it out of the plastic bag. And uh, we're going to go ahead and try to put this in. But before we do it, we're going to uh, check our measurements and make sure we're good on all that. All right. With uh, This is quite a bit deeper than uh, the smaller Yamaha Enduros is, but it's the same procedure. Uh, I take a, a half inch parallel and a depth mic. And I go down to the inner race of the bearing. And on this side we get 2.997. So we'll make a note of that. And then on the other case, it's uh, just more of the same, same thing, just go down to the inner race and we get uh, 2.995 on this one. So. Our crankshaft is then at um, four point nine nine five without any shims, just the, the standard width. I think I just took kind of an average here. Okay. 4.99 or 4.955. And let's see our total cases. Okay, here's what we had on our left case minus the parallel, the thickness of it, leaves us at 2.497. The right case is 2.995 minus the parallel, 2.495. So we add those two together and we've got 4.992. Our crank being at 4.955, uh, that leaves us 37 thousandths. And the, uh, the biggest shim I have, or combination thereof, is 25 thousandths. That's this one here. And it leaves me with 12. So I'm, I'm good with that. I think, uh, you know, you need a little bit of clearance in there just to make sure, you know, because we've got, uh, it's a little bit different from 180 out to the other, you know, so... It's uh, it just it's good to have some. You do, you never want it tight because as it heats up, it's probably going to swell uh, three four thousandths maybe, and you know you don't want it contacting everything and kind of you know making it hard 
for the engine to run. So this one here will install the 25 thousandths shim on the clutch side and as we tighten that gear up over here it'll pull this all the way over and it'll leave a 12 thousandths gap on this side. Should be just perfect. Okay, I, I want to cover one thing that I've seen uh, some questions about, and I had a couple questions here recently also, is uh, about installing your bearings and seals. If you'll notice here, you can see the writing on my, my bearings here. And that's the way you want it. You want your uh, you want to install the bearings and the seals with the manufacturer numbers out unless it tells you differently. And the same on these. And the one that really comes into question is the one on the uh, clutch side because it, it is basically the same uh, inside and out because it's holding oil in the crankcase over here and it's holding fuel and everything in over here. So it's a double lip seal and there again just find your numbers and I'm sure you're not going to be able to see them here on this but uh, right here are the numbers and you know they those numbers also are the size of the seal. This particular one is uh, 2848, I believe. So it's 28 on your ID here, and 40 on the OD, and 8 millimeters uh, thick. But if you if you want to know how to do it. Uh, always install them out and the Yamaha manuals most of them I have say that and I just I saw it again here that's why I decided to say something it says install all bearings oil seals with the stamped makers mark or numbers facing outward otherwise towards you while you're putting them in so that's if you ever question that uh, if you know, if they don't tell you one way or the other, that's how you do it. Okay, on this one, we've got the rubber seals that are going to go in here. So I'm just going to take a little, really thin grease and apply in here to help those seals. And we've got them, they're going to come in up here too. So I'm just going to apply a little thin grease on both sides here and then a little bit of light oil is going to go on the inner race in here to help bring that in and I'm also going to stick a little bit of uh, assembly lube on that bearing all right and then we'll get a little light oil also in the seal Okay, so that, that should get us started. And we'll do the same here. Just a little light oil on the snout. Okay. Now we're going to try to try to start this. Ok, 
Yeah, I'm sure I'm going to have to pull it through. Okay. Make sure you got a lot of a lot of stuff for these rods to hook on here, so make sure you keep them free. And of course, you got two of them here, and they're they're all wanting to do different things. So let me uh, let me get my puller hooked up, and we'll see if we can get this put in. Okay, I had to make this adapter for this uh, tusk kit, so just understand that there's nothing for it to hook on here so we're going to put it in like this so that everything pulls the way it should and then we'll just thread this in and it pulls against the head of it you need this if you're going to pull the AT1s same thing Okay, again, make sure your rod is it's not hooked anywhere. And we've got to keep this block up, because if we don't, then we get it in too far, we've got to put it out, or take it back out. Okay, we're going to start trying to pull it now. We've got to make sure all this stays... stays centered and... This, I don't know, this can probably lay down there for the time being. Just got to keep up with it. Keep up with all your parts. I think that's it's starting to get hard over there. It looks like we're lined up with the case here. So I think we're in good shape so far. Looks good in our seal. Everything turns good. Okay, so I think we're good. This is going to compress when we put the cylinders on. 
it's actually probably still, yeah, it's kind of loose in here. But it's, it will compress down because you've got rubber under here. Okay, let's prep to put the transmission in. Get a little assembly lube in that ball bearing. And in this needle bearing. And we'll just put a little oil up here where the shift drum goes through. Can't hardly get my finger in there, so. Put a little on a Q-tip. Okay, so that should be good. And I've got the gear pack here. So we'll put a little oil on that where it goes through. Also on the counter shaft and on our, let's see, that's I've got that in. I've got it set up wrong. Biggie. No, no. That's right. Got the other side in wrong. This one. It's going to go like that. And we'll get some lube on there too. Now, you don't want to put it it, it should not be in fifth. I always try to put these together in neutral if I can. See, here's our here's our uh, neutral. Uh, what do they call that? The <laughs> can't even think of it now. It's got the spring on it, spring in the ball, and it's going to go right in here, detent. That's what it's called. So we're going to try to get all this started here about the same time. And we're coming apart a little bit. And we got, still got a shim up there. Mm -hmm. Get my light in here. Yep. You got the thick shim on the front of the, you know, where, where it goes through the, yeah, I think I'm going to pull it back out. Yeah, this thick shim goes on the counter shaft right there. And on the other side, you've got, got a shim. <laughs> and where did it go? Let me see if I can run down all my shims here. Okay, I think I've got everything located here, so. That one gear just wants to fall down. We're just going to have to pull it up as we get there. I put some grease on it and it still didn't hold it.
I think it's just not wanting to go into the counter shaft. Yeah, there it goes. Kind of hanging up on the counter shaft. Okay. Now, I don't know what I did. I just had the shim that went right here. So I've got to locate it. And I know it's not in the the uh, the case, so I set it somewhere while I was doing something else. Okay, located it. You wouldn't believe where it was. It was in the in the pages of the book I just had open. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. So everything's good there. I believe that we are in neutral. Yep. I believe it's, I believe I can see it there. Yes. You, sh you should be able to. Oh boy. One gear. Okay, you should be able to see it in there. Okay, I'm gonna have to go wash those. Okay, we've got We've got to get our washer in here. And it's got to go up on the shoulder. And then we've got the the little clamshell. And that may be easier said than done. I probably have to utilize some grease on that. Let's see here. Let me just stick a little grease up in there because I know I'm going to need it. Okay, let's see if we can get it in there. That one's in. So we can get the one. I think I'll move it toward the front. Try to get this one in on the back. There. Let's see if we can get a snap ring on it. There. Okay, I think we're good. When you're doing that, make sure your snap ring sharp edge out so it'll it'll catch it. And we've got the uh, detent here. I'm just going to put a little little grease on the spring. Put some on there. What do I do with the ball now? Okay, we got to find that. Okay, it rolled underneath the engine here. Got a good little bunch of grease on that. And I'm still at the neutral, so we're going to go ahead and get that in there.
And I'm not going to screw it all the way down. I'm just going to run it down until it kind of has a little resistance. Okay, so this can't fall out now. And this, I can probably get my spacer on it. Let me find all that stuff. And we'll just get some a little bit of oil on it. And that's probably enough, but we'll get a little on the Q-tip here and get inside. Ah! Well, I can't hold on to anything. <laughs> I'm going to have to wash this. Alright, try it again. There we go. And I'll probably eventually get a new sprocket, but we'll get this one on just to hold it right now. Okay, so that'll hold, I think, everything in. And while we're here, We'll just go ahead and put our neutral switch in also. And we won't tighten it down. Just leave it loose. Okay, I think we're done over here for the time being. Okay, we're just going around now with our uh, Q-tips and our acetone and we'll finish up making sure all this is clean. At this point, we want to make sure we've got our dowel pins in. And actually, I kind of like to put a little grease on those because they always seem to get, uh, you know, rusty. And it's they're hard to get out. So I clean those up on my little Scotch-Brite buffing wheel. And... Then just put a little grease on them, that way they should come apart somewhat easier, I would think, next time. And we'll, uh, we'll get some grease on the cases in here for the O-rings again. And I'll go ahead and get my oil in, uh, actually uh, some uh, assembly lube in there on that bearing. Okay, so that's all good. The others I can get from the outside. Actually, I probably can't that needle bearing, so we'll go ahead and put a little bit on it too. And I don't need to put anything on my seal right now because that's... Uh, <clears throat> I'll be able to get to that uh, when I get it put together. <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and clean up the case halves and get the grease on the inside here. And then we'll get the uh, uh, Yama Bond, or what I'm using is uh, 1211, 3 Bond. That's what the Kawasaki's use, I think. Work seems to work fine. I've been using it for a while. And then we'll go ahead and see if we can get it put together. 
And again, I like to use these little syringes from the farm store. You've seen me do this many times. These cost 30 cents a piece. And, uh, you know, you don't even need to clean them. I just throw them away. They're just not that expensive. I just go ahead and put a little bit in there. I'm going to go with about a half of one right there. may need more, but... <clears throat> And then I just start applying that and just pick you a spot and start after it. Somebody's been into it right there with a screwdriver or something, so I'll put a little extra on it. And then we'll just keep going. And we'll just go ahead and make sure we've got a little oil on everything that goes through. And make sure your O-ring is not on here right now. You can get that on after you get it in there. Okay, got our shim on, get our rod straight up, let's see if we can get this done. Okay, there we go. Everything is still free, I think. And we're, I've got sealant gushing out, so we should be in good shape, I believe. Okay, I got all my screws dropped in there, so we'll just go ahead and Start squeezing it down. Just again, make sure your rods are staying free. And we're getting all our Sealant gooshing out good, so should be in good shape.
Okay, so we're all all good there. And kind of keep those rods up or they get stuck here in the case. block is down in pretty good shape there. It should, it'll finish pulling it down when we put the uh, put the cylinders on. So we can go ahead and get our o-ring on now. in there where if you, it's hard to see so you get it on while you while you're thinking about it there it is and we'll just put a little oil on it So we're ready for it. Okay. Everything looks good. It's free. I don't know how much I can do really until I get the clutch in. I can go ahead and get my spacer on, I believe. So we'll lube it up good inside and out because it's got to go over the o-ring we just stuck on the crankshaft and it's got to go in the seal I'm going to put a little a little of this oil on I think and then get some I know I put some light oil in there but we'll put some more it's not going to hurt anything It's pushed down pretty good there, but it's still not over the O-ring, so we'll just tap it a little bit. There it is. Okay. And then our gear can go on with the recess down or towards the engine. And we've got our Belleville washer. The, uh, the cone part is in there. The high parts out here, and we'll wait to tighten all that. But it's on there anyhow. I think I can go ahead and try to get the shifter in. So let me try that. Okay, we've got us a new pizza cutter here. And they're the same actually as the. Uh, Enduros are. Let's see, we've got a we've got a plate that needs to go on here, I think. I think I can go ahead and get that on though. So I'll just put a little blue Loctite on it.
Okay. Well, it's way up there. It might, I might have should have left it off. And I can surely get that spring on it up there. But we've got to get this plate in to hook the spring to. Okay, we've got that there and we'll put a little Loctite on those screws also. I got a feeling that might have got screwed up on the old one or it just wasn't shipped to me with the new case. That's probably the probably the thing. <clears throat> so Get that spring up there where I need it to be now. There we go. Okay. Now we we'll get our shift shaft through. Put a little lube on it. I believe this was pretty straight if I remember right. I didn't have any trouble getting it out. Yeah, right in there. Well, slip down there. Okay, and we've got a washer, goes down on it, and then our E clip. Not sure what I'm going to use to get that in there. It's not going to work. This is what I like to use. It just almost goes. I wonder if it'll stay long enough for me to tap it on. I think it did. There. Okay. So that should stay put. I think I can put... This is the 2 millimeter washer that goes on there. And then we have a wavy washer and a flat washer that goes back here like this. And that's going to go up inside there. And I'm just positive it fell down. Yeah, I'm going to have to probably get some grease. There it is, got it. And we've got a washer out here and a snap ring. I may have to take this one back off. Yeah, that's right.
Okay. All right. So that's that. And I guess the kicker Okay, that's going to fit in there like that. Get a little lube on it. Got uh, this piece here goes right up against here, and this little spring goes right here in the pocket. There it is. And then we should be able to get that spring. Pulled around there. Just like that. Okay. So now we gotta we gotta wait on the clutch and uh, then we can finish up this side, I think. Just like that. I think that's it. Nothing else we can put on until we get the clutch now. Okay guys, there you have it. I think we made pretty good headway on the HS1 today. And uh, I did notice one thing that uh, on the oil pump drive gear, the little nylon one, on say the AT1 and CT1 Yamahas, you have a nylon spacer between the uh, engine case and the gear and then a washer uh, aluminum washer on top of that on this bike you have two aluminum washers one below the the gear and one above the gear and both of those are missing so we'll be making both of those for uh, the next episode on this and there may be some other uh, machining also I'm not real sure yet I did get the clutch in today and it looks better than I thought so uh, I may not have to do anything but just file the thing but anyhow we'll uh, you'll see all that in the next episode that we do on on the HS1 so uh, if you would subscribe thumbs up and uh, I sure appreciate everybody going along for the ride we'll see you next video